Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Bernie Sanders says President Trump is helping people in Puerto Rico because he is a white supremacist. President Trump has been doing a fantastic job helping the people of Puerto Rico and the governor even confirmed this himself. However, this didn't stop failed candidate Bernie Sanders from calling President Trump a white supremacist. I have to say that the administration has responded to our petitions. FEMA, Brock Long, has been on the phone virtually all the time with me, checking out how things are going, stated the governor of Puerto Rico. However, the media are choosing to ignore him and spend all of their time on a San Juan mayor. No matter how much President Trump does, they try to spin everything he does. According to Bernie Sanders, the reason that Puerto Rico isn't completely fixed already is because he is racist against Puerto Ricans. Even though the majority of Puerto Ricans are white. Given the president's history on race, given the fact that he, a few months ago, said there were good people on both sides when neo-Nazis were marching in Charlottesville, yeah, I think we have a right to be suspect that he is treating the people in Puerto Rico in a different way than he has treated the people of Texas or Florida, said Sanders. Where is his proof that he is treating Puerto Rico differently? What does Charlottesville have to do with this at all? But logic and evidence has never mattered to someone like Bernie Sanders. CNN's Brian Stelter attacks President Trump's tweets on Puerto Rico for being a racist dog whistle. President Trump has been doing an incredible job at helping the people of Puerto Rico and even the governor was willing to admit it. I have to say that the administration has responded to our petitions. FEMA, Brock Long, has been on the phone virtually all the time with me, checking out how things are going, said the governor. However, the media ignored the governor and are instead spending all of their time reporting on a San Juan mayor who insulted President Trump. Trump defended himself and said that despite what this mayor is saying, his results will speak for themselves. Such poor leadership ability by the mayor of San Juan, and others in Puerto Rico, who are not able to get their workers to help. They want everything to be done for them when it should be a community effort. 10,000 federal workers now on island doing a fantastic job, tweeted President Trump. Now that President Trump defended himself the mainstream media is attacking him for being a racist against Puerto Ricans. At best the president's tweets are insensitive today. I think at worst, Fred, they are a racist dog whistle, a disgraceful reaction to what he's seen on television, said CNN's Brian Stelter. He's clearly watching the mayor of San Juan calling for more help, begging for more help, and reacting this way. I think it's personally beyond the pale and unpresidential. I'm so glad our reporters there in Puerto Rico are describing what's actually happening on the ground. And I hope the president in between his golf game today watches more of those reports from the ground, rather than just impulsively reacting to what he's seen from the mayor of San Juan, said Stelter. Famous rapper makes disgusting comment about white women while casting blame for Vegas shooting. Liberals like to accuse conservatives of racism and hatred, but in reality, it all comes from them. One famous rapper Lil B used the Las Vegas shooting as an excuse to go on one of the most racist rants that you will ever sow. He wrote it all in capital letters and fractured English. White people so scared they the reason why guns are a problem if white people put down the guns we all be safe but nope. They violent, started. Let's talk about how secretly these harmless looking white people with tight pants suits and glasses are pushing passive violence. Let's talk about how these suburban 7th heaven looking white people sell drugs in college and are okay with violence on all levels. He wrote. He then went after white people for spreading stereotypes. He doesn't see the irony apparently. The reason why there is a stereotype is because of white people this is y'all language and phyllis fizz lol. 
Stop it. Y'all are violent, he said. Then Loby went after a white woman. White women really scare me the most because they can be true social paths. And yes Latino women and Asian women are fake white. LOL he tweeted. See the things is white folks are really scared. You know all the white people feel like they are frail blonde gifts from God. LOL. Collectively white people as a whole need to go on Fox News and for a month talk about how it's their fault of black oppression. Start. Dash Lil B he tweeted. Pat Robertson exposes connection between NFL flag protests and Las Vegas shooting. Television preacher Pat Robertson made a very controversial statement about a possible connection between the NFL flag protests and the deadly shooting in Las Vegas. Liberals are furious over the statement, but some are able to see some truth in what he is saying. Violence in the streets, ladies and gentlemen. Why is it happening? Asked Robertson. You know what I'd like to give you is the fact that we have disrespect for authority. There is profound disrespect of our president, all across this nation they say terrible things about him. It's in the news, it's in other places, said Robertson. There is disrespect now for our national anthem, disrespect for our veterans, disrespect for the institutions of our government, disrespect for the court system. All the way up and down the line, disrespect, said Robertson. And when you lose that kind of respect, you lose authority. But more than anything, until there is biblical authority, there has to be some controlling authority in our society, and there is none. And when there is no vision of God, the people say, there's no vision of God, the people run amok, said Robertson. What do you think of his analysis? Do you agree, or do you think this is a stretch? Trey Gowdy makes unbelievable realization about Las Vegas shooting. After the deadly shooting in Vegas, people are starting to suspect that there was more than one person involved. While Hillary Clinton and the rest of the Democrats are calling to ban silencers, even though silencers weren't even used during the shooting, Trey Gowdy is focused on read issues. It's an incredible level of premeditation that you don't ordinarily see. And it is difficult to believe that a single person could have done this without detection. And so, I hope that what comes out of this is people, you know, lots of crime is prevented because a non-law enforcement officer says something, said Gowdy in an interview on Fox News. The weapons and whether or not it was altered to become fully automatic and the premeditation of picking a certain hotel room. I think we're going to find someone along the way was suspicious they should have turned that suspicion into a phone call to law enforcement," said Gowdy. It's an incredible amount of premeditation to not go detected," said Gowdy. Do you think that the shooter Stephen Paddock did this all by himself? Or did he get help? More will be discovered as the days go on. Washington Post just used third graders to attack Trump, it's sick. The mainstream media has become so slanted to the left that it no longer even pretends to not be unbiased or accurate. A perfect example of this is a recent feature in Jeff Bezos' owned Washington Post magazine, where they interviewed third grade school children on what they think of the issues and politics of the day. However, the reporters somehow failed to locate a single child who doesn't have, or, Rather, whose family doesn't have, a liberal point of view," said writer Britt Peterson, who clearly lives in a different universe than regular Americans, in the three classes where I asked how many students would have voted for Hillary Clinton, all hands went up. I didn't ask this question at Bellows Spring, but no one expressed support for Donald Trump there either. The feature then used these third graders to spout leftist talking points," said third grader Devonna Holland. For example, I think that Hillary should have won because people are saying that Trump cheated in the election because they said he was working with Russia or ISIS or something. Commented fellow third grader Rana Robinson, Hillary was supposed to win. I mean, she didn't hate Mexicans. 
Donald Trump did. She was acting like a grown-up. But Donald Trump just, I can't even say about him. He's mean. Said Mocklin Dunn, I would vote for Hillary Clinton because Donald Trump doesn't like black people and Hillary Clinton does. Offered Nick Saylor his aid. I think that if I could vote, I would vote for Hillary Clinton because I wouldn't want to vote for Donald Trump because he's orange. Another girl added, it made me a little bit mad that it was another boy to be the president because there hasn't been a female president before. Do you think the Washington Post should be embarrassed about the fact that it used grade school age children to push leftist propaganda? CNN says NFL anger is about hating black people has nothing to do with disrespecting the flag. CNN's Montal Williams claimed that Republicans who dislike these NFL protests don't care about the flag, they just care about hating black people. Ever since President Trump insulted NFL players, the mainstream media has been refused to listen to conservatives who just don't want people disrespecting our country. This has nothing to do with disrespecting the flag. It has to do with the fact that in some ways in this country we still think black men should shut up, accept what you get, and keep your mouth shut. I don't agree, said Williams. Look, I'll tell you something, the reason I spoke out this week is because again, let's break this down. I held my hand up and said I do solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. I didn't say I support a flag, a piece of paper. I said the Constitution, said Williams. And when I do so, that means that the first thing that our forefathers thought to give us the right to do was the right to protest, said Williams. So you denigrate and disrespect the lives of all 300,000 Americans that died in World War II, 600,000 Americans that were wounded in World War II. The thousands that have just put their life on the line right now to give you the right to protest. You denigrate them. Stop it, he said. That is ridiculous.